Hello and welcome back to another video. Now it doesn't seem that long ago that I was filming a product review video for Bluetti featuring their brand new revolutionary Charger 1. But during the course of that video I did point out that this had one tiny little um, fundamental flaw and that was a simple fact. Despite being able to use this to take power from your alternator and put that power into your solar generator you can't actually use solar panels at the same time. Although I did come up with a slight sort of hack to get around this although Bluetti don't recommend you actually do it of course you could always unplug this and then plug in your solar panels when you're stationary but most of us just want something we can set up and forget about and drive and let it do its own thing right and Bluetti rightly so understand this and that's why they've redesigned the Charger 1 and come up with the Charger 2 and here it is this is the Charger 2 and despite being called Charger 2 let me assure you, this can do so much more than the Charger 1. So let's take it out of the box and take a real close, in-depth look at the Charger 2 and what it can do. Right, let's get it out of the box as quick as we can. I don't usually do unboxing videos, but here we are. There's a massive box of accessories, cables and whatnot. Some protective packaging which is typical of Bluetti, they do protect their goods for transportation. Here we go. This is the Bluetti Charger 2. Take a look at that, it is so much bigger than the Charger 1. You can see the size difference. And also, the Charger 1 has an input on one side and an output on the other, and that is pretty much it. Whereas the Charger 2, if you look at the bottom of it, it has an array of ports here. And to use those ports, you do need a few cables. Bluetti kindly supply them, along with an instruction manual, which we will be reading for once. Right, so we've got this main thick heavy cable here. This is the cable that you would use to connect the Charger 2 to your engine starter battery. And it's also got a very important battery fuse so this goes on your battery terminal and it has a fuse I do believe here like that so this fuse will protect the charger 2 and your engine battery should anything go astray it also has some MC4 cables and I assume these cables are what you use to connect your charger 2 to your power pack no matter what make it is it doesn't have to be a Bluetti this will work just like the Charger 1 with pretty much any power station or portable solar generator. All right, let's put these boxes out of the way. Oh, and also, Bluetti did send me this extra cable, and I do believe this is an optional extra. This doesn't come as standard. This cable will allow you to connect the Charger 2 directly to an expansion battery, I do believe. I'm not 100% sure. We still need to read the instructions. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to read these instructions. And then once I've read these instructions, we'll take all of this outside, put it on the bench and connect it all up. Okay, so I've read the instruction manual and I've got to say, I'm really pleasantly surprised on how simple this is to use. It is no more complicated than the Bluetti Charger 1. The Charger 2, despite having all these cables, it really is just plug in and play. They've done a fantastic job on this. Let me just hold this up so you can see the wiring diagram for yourselves. I might even screenshot this. Don't know if my camera will focus on that, but there you go. You can see there for yourselves how simply explained it is, just that one diagram. So all these cables here, all they are is, we've got MC4 connectors for input, MC4 connectors for our output. And like I said earlier, the nice big thick cable here, this is so we can connect our charger to, to our engine starter battery, meaning you can use this on pretty much any vehicle, except an EV, of course. If you've got an electric vehicle, this won't work because as far as I'm aware, electric vehicles don't have alternators. So just bear that in mind. Now I was right in guessing this does plug into expansion batteries, but it also plugs into and I'll just find a page it also plugs into various power stations as well Bluetti's only Bluetti's by the way um, so it will plug into a Apex 300 which I just so happen to have in my Sprinter an AC200L and AC200 Max which I used to have in my Sprinter so we'll 
we'll probably put this to the test later on in this video but for now i want to demonstrate how easy these are to actually wire up and connect to any vehicle i'm going to do that out on the bench rather than show you me installing it into the vario which it will end up being um, because i can't really film that because it's, everything's inside this cabinet here and it should be, be impossible to film that so let's go outside put this on the bench and we'll do a mock-up demonstration of how quick and easy this is to connect up to any vehicle except an ev of course <laughs> Okay, so I think I've got everything I need here for this demonstration on how easy it is to connect up the Charger 2 to any vehicle. And this goes for the Charger 1 as well. So this battery here represents the starter battery of our vehicle. Now, quick word before we go any further, whenever working on an engine battery or a starter battery in this case, it's always a good idea to disconnect the neutral terminal first before even thinking about going and touching the positive terminal. And the reason for this is because the neutral terminal is actually earthed to the chassis or the body of the vehicle. So if you were to work on the, the positive terminal first, there's a high risk that your spanner could touch the bodywork of your van or your car and you're gonna see sparks. You're gonna see fireworks basically. Very dangerous, could potentially cause a fire. So therefore always, always disconnect the neutral side of the battery first before doing anything. Now whilst on the subject of safety, our nice big cable that connects our charger to, to our battery has got open-ended terminals you can see here. So the ones with the loops on go to our engine battery. The ones with the flat square crimps then go to our charger too. Now do not be tempted to connect this end first because again, you've got bare wires this end and if these were to touch or touch the body of your vehicle, once again, things are gonna get a little bit dicey. So it's always a good idea to connect this end of the circuit to the Charger 2 first. So let's go ahead and connect everything we need to connect to the Charger 2, and then we'll connect it to the rest of our devices. So to do that, we need to remove the cover to get to the terminal screws. I've already loosened these screws off, just for the sake of this video to make it a little bit quicker. So we take our screws out. I'm actually gonna put these screws in my back pocket so we don't lose them. And then this cover simply comes off. And there you go, you can see all the terminals now are exposed so we can get to them nice and easy. I'm gonna to need to put this cover back so I'm gonna put that to one side. Now Bluetti have clearly marked all their cables. Um, it's really quite foolproof really. You can see it's got ALT written on here with a plus and minus, the red being the live, black being the neutral. And on the charger two itself, it actually says ALT as well with plus and minus on it. And all the terminals are clearly marked. So you really can't go wrong with this. As long as you follow what it says on here and you match them up, you'll be perfectly fine. So we're gonna go ahead, put these in the relative terminal blocks. Let's just move that back a bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And these go in like that and then we screw it from the top down. Now you don't have to over tighten these, you don't have to really screw it down tight. All you need to do is make sure they're not gonna vibrate loose and it's tight enough to give us a good connection. So there we go. Nicely insulated, once that cover's on top of there, it's pretty safe, it's pretty good to go really. So that's our battery main cable connected. Before we connect this up to here, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the rest of the cables to our charger too. So we have got, again, it clearly says, even on these, it says CHG, which I believe means charge. And again, on here, we've got a corresponding terminal with the same three letters on it. Really is quite simple, can't go wrong really. They've really thought this through. I mean, I'm, I don't even need to look at the instruction manual, although I wouldn't suggest you don't. I suggest you go through the instruction manual quite thoroughly before even attempting to connect any of this up. And now this one, this says PV on there, plus and minus. And again, on the charger too, you've got a terminal there with PV written on it. So we'll put these in here, red to the plus, black to the minus. And then this one, now what does this one say? Battery plus a minus. 
So I'll take it, this one goes to the battery terminal on here. It says battery plus and minus. But I'm just going to refer to the instruction manual just to make sure. So you can clearly see on the instruction manual with your auxiliary cables and it says to connect them to the battery. I just wanted to double check because it's the first time I've used this. And then we've got a communication port on this as well, which is a bit like um, an ethernet cable, I do believe. Yeah, right, okay, it's simple enough. Look at that. And then a communication cable. There we go, that's it. So that's all our cables connected up to our charger too. Now we need to connect the charger to to the actual engine start battery. Now when threading this cable through the bodywork of your van, just be careful there's no sharp edges. Although this has got a protective sleeve on it, just bear that in mind that you need to make sure that nothing is gonna rub against this over time and wear through and again, could cause an issue later on down the line. So as mentioned earlier, it's always a good idea to work on the positive side or the live side of your battery before connecting up the neutral. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. I'll just move this round here so it's in shot a little bit better because we need to add our fuse. So this is our fuse terminal block. It goes on top of the battery with a locking washer and a nut. And again, you don't have to do these up tight. You haven't got a lot really wrench it round. It's just got to be tight enough so that it's not going to move or vibrate loose. This is our fuse, a terminal block fuse that goes on top of there. Then our live cable goes on top. Again, nice chrome washer, nice chrome locking washer, nice chrome nut on top of here. Just pinch it up. You haven't got to tighten it right down because you'll damage the fuse if you do. So that's connected. Now our final connection is the neutral. And when you get to this stage, you can then connect up your neutral terminal back to your battery once you've finished working on the live side. And that way you're safe. You know you're not going to cause any issues. There you go. That is pretty much it. That's all connected up now, ready to go. I've got a little green pulsing light on the on off switch here, which means it's in standby mode. When we start our vehicle up, this light will stop flashing and go a solid green color. And also if you want to reset it, you hold the button down for eight seconds and it will reset the device. Right, so now everything's connected up. I'm going to go ahead and put our safety shield back on before we do anything else. Do these up. So now we need to connect our charger too to our actual power station. And to do that, we use a solar cable. So this is where it connects up. So now we take the charge cable, which has also got MC4 connectors on it, plug it in, done. That is it. If you've got no other auxiliary stuff to plug into this, that is all you need to do. But we are going to use these accessories. So this goes into our expansion battery, like that. Right, so that's switched on, but it does appear that the expansion battery is a little bit flat. We might have to change this out for a different battery. We've got our um, Elite 200 V2 now connected up to the Bluetti Charger 2. The Bluetti Charger 2 is in turn connected up to our engine starter battery. Only one thing left to do, and that is to actually plug a solar panel into this. And it just so happens I have a 400 watt solar panel resting outside although it is in the shade at the moment because the sun is quite low. Hopefully the sun will come up later and we can test this out. Right, so that's plugged in. This can take up to 600 watts of solar. Like I say, I've got a 400 watt solar panel connected to this at the moment. Right, our light is still pulsating. So all that's left to do now is to go onto the Bluetti app and set this up so that it's paired to our Elite 200 V2 these look at that <laughs> i think they covered just about everyone there's our elite v2 there we confirm and it says it's going to set it at 56 volts we put yes and that is it we are done now via the app you can 
change the voltage on this, which is why you can actually use this with any power station because you can control the output voltage. It makes it uh, quite unique in the fact that you can use pretty much any power station with this. It doesn't have to be a Bluetti power station. Bear with me while I set this up. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, this, this expansion battery is flat, unfortunately. So I'm gonna just quickly change this battery for a different one. I'll be right back. Right, that's it, that's on, that should work now. Right, so this is a Bluetti B300K expansion battery. Luckily, I've got this inside my Sprinter. It is 40% charged. Right, uh, let's see if we can pair that up with this. Let's turn that to charging, see what happens. Right, so it's actually taking, it's taking power from this expansion battery and putting it into the uh, Elite 200 V2. So that means, bear with me, that means that you can expand any power pack using an expansion battery via the charger too. So this is now taking power and putting it into here. It's actually putting in 400 watts from this battery into here. That's interesting. I didn't realise it would do that. Okay, right. So now all that's left for me to do really then is to actually connect this up to my van, start the engine, and then we'll see what happens. And hopefully by that time, the sun will be high enough to give us some solar as well. Let's do that next. Okay, to make things a little bit easier on myself, I decided just to simply connect up jump leads to my Sprinter, which is just behind my camera. And also it makes it things more visual as well so you can see exactly what's going on so let's go ahead start up my sprinter and i'm really excited to see if the charger 2 will charge the expansion battery and the power pack at the same time let's have a go there we go that's the van going see what's going on so we'll look on the app there we go it's on now so this should be on yes i've got a solid green light Yes, it's charging. You can see the indicator lights on here are going. And this is charging as well. So my alternator is now charging the expansion battery and the power pack at the same time. <laughs> it's just a pity the sun's not up yet. It looks like there's a huge cloud coming across there. I don't think we're going to get much opportunity to check the solar, unfortunately. But the main thing is, it works. Let me just turn the engine off. Well, whilst editing this video, the sun actually come out and I can tell you we have 257 watts of power going through from solar. So now let's quickly start the sprinter and see how much that increases by. <laughs> so now look. Yes, it's all go. So with the sun shining, the engine running, we've got 302 watts going into the battery, 275 watts going into the main unit, giving us a total of 592 watts in total. Absolutely fantastic, almost 600 watts of power going into our batteries. And I've only got a 400 watt solar panel. You know, it's not big and it's not exactly the middle of summer. Let me just turn the engine off. So there you go, I think Blue Eti have really outdone themselves. Now, not only can you use the Charger 2 to charge any solar power bank, you can also use it to charge an expansion battery, meaning doesn't matter what power bank you have, you can expand your battery capacity, if you like, and it doesn't end there. If for any reason your engine battery was to go flat, you can now take the power from your power banks and put it into your engine battery, meaning you're not going to get stranded in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to installing this into my Mercedes Vario. And I will leave a link to Bluetti's website in the description of this video, purely for your convenience and I'll also leave a little discount code for you as well as a way of saying thank you. So thank you for watching this video, hopefully you found it mildly entertaining, slightly informative, if you did then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching, ta half an hour. Absolutely brilliant, I'm genuinely, genuinely excited to get this in my van. Right.